is indeed worthy to be praised. Good evening. Welcome to St. Mark's this Sunday evening, this first Sunday in the season of Lent. Uh, Lent began on Ash Wednesday and uh, from Wednesday going forward right up to Easter. We hope each evening, uh, Monday to Friday, to put up on our YouTube channel a prayer, a reflection, uh, a Bible verse or passage, a chance just to connect together at six o'clock. It's been so good uh, that so many people have been able to switch on at six o'clock and we have that sense of praying together at the same time. Obviously, you can pray and catch up with it uh, afterwards, but uh, every weekday, Monday to Friday, uh, this coming week and right through to Easter, we hope uh, to be able to put something up to prompt people to pray together for the church, for the community, and indeed for the nation. And many churches are responding to the call, call to prayer that the Archbishop of Canterbury has asked us to. So we have a sense of praying with many other Christians at six o'clock on weekdays. Uh, there'll be something each evening, look out particularly for Wednesday, when we benefit from Caroline's creativity, ingenuity, expertise, wisdom in being able to connect us uh, to some thought or reflection through a work of art. If you missed last Wednesday, it's there, go back and enjoy uh, just being stimulated to thought uh, by the work of art she showed, uh, which uh, put us in mind of the temptations of Jesus. It's been another uh, interesting week in the community. Uh, our vaccination centre has uh, vaccinated something like 2,400 people this week in two days. Uh, that takes us to our total of uh, getting up to about 7,000 people. It's just offering, operating uh, two, maybe three days a week, uh, but something like almost 7,000 people have received the COVID-19 vaccination in the Montgomery Hall. Pray on. Uh, for this work, this partnership we are enjoying with our local health services. Together through this uh, period of lockdown and pandemic, and we expect uh, tomorrow the government to announce some changes. We are waiting. Each one of us has got our own questions about when and what will be allowed, uh, and we will have our hopes. Um, maybe some will have their anxieties about things being unlocked and uh, a road back to some sort of normality. Let's pray for our Prime Minister, the Cabinet, those who've got the awesome responsibility of making decisions which affect literally matters of life and death. But in the midst of all the questions, uh, there's a question which Epi's going to sing in song. What is our hope in life and death? What's it all about? What is our hope? Yes, we have hopes in the short term uh, for ending of lockdown and the roadmap to greater freedoms, but what is really our hope in life and death. This song asks and answers that question. Oh, 
Turn to the Bible. Uh, the last few Sunday evenings, we have been looking at the Old Testament book of Joshua, and we pick up the story in chapter 5 from verse 13. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then, Lord, then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them, Sound a long blast on the trumpets. Have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, will go up everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, Advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the Ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word, until the day I tell you to shout, then shout! So he had the Ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priests took up the Ark of the Lord. The Ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the Ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the Ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp, and they did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. 
All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the, man, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men, women, young and old, cattle, sheep and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in, brought out Rahab, her father and mother, her brothers and sisters and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. I wonder if, like me, you feel a song coming on. Just before the battle of Jericho, 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 just before the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. You may talk about your men of Gideon, you may talk about the men of Saul, but there's none like good old Joshua at the battle of Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. Up to the walls of Jericho, they marched with spears in hand. Come below them, ran horse, Joshua said, cause the battle is in our Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Then the lamb ram sheep horns began to blow, the trumpets began to sound. Joshua commanded the men to shout, and the walls came tumbling down. Jericho, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. One more time, and Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. And the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. What a great song. Uh, but lots of commentators have uh, absolutely stated Joshua did not fight the Battle of Jericho. Uh, the thrust of the story, of course, is that he didn't fight a battle, did he? He uh, simply walked around uh, blowing trumpets and then having a shout. It was God who fought the Battle of Jericho. Joshua basically was a bystander, a spectator. Uh, so as much as we love that song, Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down, actually we see God's hand in it all. Let's just uh, recap on the details, but uh, let me first of all apologise that uh, I am not quite as imaginative as last week's preacher. Uh, last week's preacher, Phil, led us through uh, the crossing of the River Jordan, and uh, if you missed it, you might want to go back and look at it, because uh, rather than uh, delivering his sermon uh, from... A church or home, uh, he did it from the middle of the river, uh, not the, uh, the river that uh, Joshua's people crossed, uh, but the River Thames, uh, marvellously uh, evoking uh, the scene, helping us to imagine uh, water and uh, just really to continue to dwell on uh, the symbolism of crossing water and uh, moving to receiving God's promises. Thank you, Phil, for that extraordinary uh, creative way of doing it. So I'm sorry that I'm not sitting on a wall, uh, even better, a wall which slowly or suddenly crumbles beneath me. Uh, but you've got the picture. Uh, this city of Jericho somehow is surrounded by walls. Um, they're not quite sure if it was a, a solid wall or whether it was the, the houses built together uh, as a fortification. Do you remember 
uh, back in chapter 2, uh, when Rahab put the spies out of her window, which was part of the wall. They went out of her house window down uh, outside. So perhaps it was houses together forming the wall. Maybe it was a, a wall as pictured in so many of our children's Bibles. Um, but the facts of the matter are this. Uh, Joshua is promised by God that he'll be the one who leads the people into the land that is to be given to them. And the battle of Jericho, or the conquest of Jericho, begins with this extraordinary encounter between Joshua and a man who says that he is the commander of the Lord's army. And I don't know about you, but I find a slightly sort of comic element uh, to this story. Uh, Joshua not unreasonably says, are you for us or are you for our enemies? And he says, neither. I am the commander of the army of the Lord. And Joshua uh, is uh, full of awe. He fa falls face down to the ground in reverence. And he says uh, to himself that this is the commander of the Lord's army. It's a messenger from God. We don't quite know whether it's an angel or some other heavenly being. Um, but the commander of the Lord's army is there. The messenger has come. And so, not unreasonably, Joshua says, what message does my Lord have for his servant? And uh, you think, what great message would, would it be? Would it be a command? Would it be a promise? Would it be a great uh, statement of how the battle, how the conquest will go? Would it be the giving of law, uh, rule orders? And the commander of the army simply says, take off your shoes. <laughs> take off your shoes. That's the message. Uh, but it is obviously much more than uh, just a command to be properly dressed. It's a, it's a reminder that Joshua is in the presence of God. And there's a sense in which the presence of God is holy ground. Moses uh, was given the same command, wasn't, it? wasn't he? And there's an echo of uh, when Moses encounters God. You are on holy ground. Take off your shoes. It's the sense that Joshua is confronted with the reality of God's presence. This is a holy moment. This is a sense where he is almost overcome, almost overwhelmed with a sense of God's presence. What is the response? What is the message? Uh, it's maybe that message, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that you are in God's presence. There's nothing to do, nothing to, to act on, no, not even a rule or law to obey except to experience the presence of God, to acknowledge the presence of God, and to make a response of holiness. Take off your shoes. And then we get in chapter 6 the narration of what happens, and we know the story well. Uh, the people are led uh, by trumpeters, and they go round the city of Jericho once, and they do that the next day, and the next day, and the next day for six days. And then on the significant seventh day, they do it seventh time, seven times. And at that great moment, uh, Joshua says, now is the moment to blow the trumpets and to shout. And at the shout, down come the walls. And the city is given over to Joshua and his people. The battle belongs to the Lord. That's a, a phrase, that's a verse which comes in another part of the Old Testament. But it uh, equally could be said of the Battle of Jericho. It's not Joshua who fought the Battle of Jericho, but the battle was fought by God in a supernatural way. The people simply had to recognize the presence of God, the holiness of God, and the power of God. And there is the detail of the story uh, that follows up what we were looking at uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the story of Rahab and her family. Uh, you'll remember that Rahab hid the spies who came to spy out uh, Jericho. Uh, she sent uh, the king of Jericho's men off in the wrong direction. She let them out through the window of our house, down the wall, and told them to wait three days in the, um, in the hills and then to come out. And they promised her, our life for your life. And so Rahab and her family, their lives are preserved when everybody else and everything else in the city is destroyed. What do we make of uh, this battle of Jericho, these dramatic walls coming down? 
just as last week we were prompted to think, what does the river, what does crossing the river really mean for us? What are we uh, encountering in, in terms of taking new ground or going forward or going across obstacles? Uh, how do we apply that to uh, the situation we're in today? Um, walls, I guess, are the obstacles, the barriers uh, to receiving God's promises. And uh, those walls dramatically come down in this story. What is uh, Joshua's part in the Battle of Jericho? Uh, what is his part and his people? Well, wouldn't we say that those six days and then the seventh day uh, of seven times going around the city uh, is like an extended act of worship? Um, they are blowing their horns, they are parading, they are processing, they are carrying the Ark of the Lord, the symbol of God's presence with them. What they are doing is worship. If you were an onlooker or even part of the, the people, you might, uh, you might have been told, uh, very soon we are going to take the city. Very soon there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a conquest. Your thoughts would have uh, turned to military maneuvers. Uh, you might have been interested in the strategy. Are we surrounding uh, the city? What weapons are we using? Uh, if you were suddenly told, actually, you are being invited simply to walk, to possess to blow trumpets, to worship, you might uh, almost think, well, how will that achieve anything? But actually, it's in the act of worship and trust and obedience that the people see the walls come down. What is the role of the church in national crisis? Yes, there are practical ways in which we can get involved. Yes, we pray uh, for those who are nursing, caring. Uh, yes, we take up the opportunity to be in partnership with the health services in putting the Montgomery Hall at their disposal to be used as a vaccination center. Yes, there are some practical things we can do, but maybe we could say there's still the real importance of a worshiping church, that uh, in times of crisis, the church, number one duty is to worship, is to praise, is to take off our shoes and realize we are in the presence of God, to worship, to sing, to pray, to gather together in times of crisis is not like uh, the deck chairs on the Titanic. It's not like uh, in, the, in the film of the Titanic, the, the violinists who are simply playing uh, to keep their spirits up. Uh, it's not like that. It's not uh, waste, a waste of time or a denial of the crisis, but actually it's saying in crisis, in times of change, in times of uncertainty, let's come back to God. Let's worship him. Let's praise him. Let's obey him, even though it may look like we're not achieving anything. Uh, on those first six days, as they went back to camp, the people might have scratched their head and say, well, what was the point of that? Uh, why did we just go around blowing our trumpet, carrying the ark of the Lord? Uh, these walls aren't going to fall down by themselves, are they? What a waste of time. And yet it's in their obedience and in their worship that God delivers to them what they had really hoped for. The primacy of worship, the supreme importance of saying that's what the church is for. Yes, we look to get our hands dirty, to get involved in practical ways of serving our neighbors. Yes, we want to be the hands and feet of Christ today in the world. But let's not forget that actually our prime calling, our first calling, is to prayer and to worship. To realize, as Joshua did when he met the commander of the Lord, that the most important thing is. Simply the message from God is, he is a holy God, and he is here. We are in his presence. Be still, and know that God is here. Be still, and know who God is, and lift up his name with the sound of singing. Lift up his name in all the earth. The church is called to worship as a way of discovering that God delivers on his promises. A couple of other things just to, to notice in this story. Uh, one is uh, we read that uh, Joshua dedicates the whole city to the Lord. They recognize the hand of God in bringing them this victory, and they say everything must go to God. This is not a time for feathering their own nests, uh, for selfishness, uh, individualism. This is a time where together the people of God say this was done by God. It's the work of God. To God be the glory, and to him be all of the credit and the treasures. And uh, we see also the 
uh, honouring of Rahab's service. And then the very last verse, which I didn't quite get to in reading, uh, but verse 27 of chapter 6 says, So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. The deeds of God became known among the nations. Uh, and we read of the fear, the right fear of the Lord. This God who is with Joshua is the God who will conquer, even without necessarily a military battle, even just on the praise and worship and obedience of his people. So we said uh, walls maybe are symbolic of the barriers, the obstacles uh, in our lives. What are, the, what are the walls we are facing? Um, what are the walls which we are glad to see come tumbling down? Well, uh, one of the highlights of this week uh, was the Spear celebration. Uh, those of you who don't know about Spear, let me uh, just very quickly summarise what it is. Um, we, as a church, are delighted to host a Spear Centre. Spear is a project working with young adults aged 16 to 24 to help them become ready for the world of work. Uh, most of them are young people who are not in work or education at the time they begin the six-week course. And the six-week course is transformational in terms of building confidence, uh, challenging mindset, and helping uh, young adults to become work ready. And at the end of the six-week course, there is a celebration. We used to be able to do it in person, uh, in the church building, uh, but obviously in the last few months it's been done online. And there was a Zoom celebration uh, just a couple of days ago. And it was deeply moving, as it always is, uh, to hear the young people just say uh, what they've learned over the last six weeks. Uh, the way in which our coaches, Alex, Anna and Fion, have touched their lives uh, simply by coaching them, encouraging them, speaking with them, listening to them. Deeply moving just to hear how some of the barriers, some of the walls, obstacles to employment have come tumbling down and how some of them are already in work or in education. It's a wonderful privilege to see those walls of disadvantage in some cases, uh, walls of uh, inexperience come tumbling down. The walls of addiction are also being broken down through our partnership with ODAT one day at a time. I could tell you so many stories about uh, those who have been literally sort of facing a brick wall in their lives uh, through addiction to alcohol or to drugs and how they've been helped to find those walls come crumbling down and to walk into uh, a new promised land of order and opportunity rather than the previous chaos. And for each one of us, uh, maybe there are barriers or obstacles, maybe habits, maybe practices, maybe things we do and think about which are obstacles to us really receiving the fullness of God's promises. Lent, as I said at the beginning, is a time of self-reflection. How am I standing with God? The purpose of giving things up, as is traditional at Lent, uh, is really to make people have more time to think, to reflect uh, what needs to be changed in my life. Uh, and it's, it's a great annual, and it's a good annual exercise just to take stock and say, how am I walking with the Lord? Am I worshipping? Am I walking? Those were the two things that Joshua's people were called to do, to go for a walk with God and to worship him and to see his power. During these lockdown weeks, uh, months, uh, walking is almost the only thing that people have been able to, to do as a pastime or as recreation. Uh, lots of people have got into walking far more than they used to. Uh, maybe it's good uh, for us to walk with God, uh, to walk around uh, our area, our neighbourhood in prayer. And in worship, it may not be blowing your trumpet, uh, may not be carrying the ark of the Lord. The sense of just walking with God, waiting on him, and uh, understanding his presence. What is the church called to do in times of crisis? Yes, we can get involved in practical ways. First and foremost, we are to be a people of prayer and a people of worship. Not whistling in the wind, not wasting our time, not uh, in denial, but the real work of the battle is in prayer, in communion, in fellowship, in partnership with God, because the battle belongs to the Lord. 
that verse is actually from 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 15. The battle belongs to the Lord. What an encouragement that is uh, to us. Whatever battles you're facing, whatever battles we are facing together, it's great to be able to say, actually, this is not for me to fight the battle. It's for God to fight the battle, for me to be aware of his presence, to be aware of his holiness, to respond as Joshua was told, to take off my shoes. And what does that mean for us? Just to have that real sense that we are in the presence of God. Be still. The presence of the Lord is here. And to take heart, to walk with him, and to make sure we are worshipping. At the moment, uh, the worship of the church is, is different to how it used to be. Uh, for some, you're worshipping from home. Others, worshipping in the building. But even those in the building are not able to join in heartily with the singing. We are dependent on uh, our worship leaders singing really on our behalf. Some people have said to me that that's actually made them concentrate a bit more on the words, to listen to the words. And in our morning service, we've always had a couple of songs where uh, Caroline and Emily have led us in action songs. And those of you who have been in church uh, uh, in the morning will know how uh, there's been a 100% take-up of people joining in with the actions. In the old days, uh, actions were sort of optional and uh, some people were too cool to join in with actions uh, and others uh, would, would love them. But at the moment, those of us worshipping in church on Sunday mornings are 100% joining in with the actions. And uh, there is something helpful about the creative actions we've been given. Uh, they help us to really focus on the words, to think. And we enter into worship uh, through that through those actions and through that uh, process of just thinking through what we're doing, what, how we're making signs. And that's been extraordinarily helpful. But whether we sing, whether we have actions, uh, the point is to be acknowledging God's presence, acknowledging God's worthiness, uh, his worsh, worship, uh, to be praising him and walking with him. It was an act of worship which led to the change to the delivering of Jericho into Joshua's hands. Lonnie is going to sing a song. We had it uh, last Sunday, but it's worth repeating uh, because it, uh, it encapsulates this message. The battle belongs to the Lord.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you that the battle belongs to you. Uh, help us to recognize your presence with us. Help us to have a right sense of awe and wonder. And give us joy in walking with you to, uh, this week. Walking with you around our parish. Walking with you wherever we go. That sense of being in partnership with you. And give us, we pray, uh, a spirit of worship in our lives. Whether we're on our own at home or whether we are together with God's people. There's something wonderful about worshipping together. And we look forward to those days where we can gather in great numbers again, uh, without distancing. We look forward to those days where we can sing our hearts out and lift the roof with praise and worship. But Lord, help us, uh, even with uh, some of the present restrictions, to be able to worship you, to see the importance of worship. Those who play instruments, Lord, grant them joy in blowing their trumpets uh, or whatever it may be, uh, however they may be playing their instruments. Put a song of joy in our hearts this evening. Put a song of praise on our lips tomorrow and through this coming week. May the joy of the Lord be our strength, that verse we were looking at in this morning service. Lord God, you know the different barriers, obstacles, walls that each one of us are facing. May we have a delight in seeing those walls come down. We pray against the, the wall of this coronavirus. This pandemic is a barrier to so many people being able to travel, to work, to meet friends, to relate. It's taken a huge cost of lives, of health, and of people's, of people's happiness. Pray, Lord God, for the government as uh, in the next day or so we expect to hear of changes, schools reopening. Lord, there will be some who will be fearing it's too fast, others disappointed that it's too slow. Lord, we put all these decisions into your hands. And we pray that this battle might be a battle which belongs to you, and a battle which you bring your victory, your healing, your wholeness to your people. Keep us alert, keep us alive to the opportunities we have to come alongside, put into your hands all that we'll be doing this week. We mentioned the work of Spear and ODAT. Pray on for the work of the vaccination centre at the Montgomery Hall. Pray on, Lord God, that we might be channels of peace, beacons of hope in a world where so many people are losing hope. May the fame of your name spread across this nation and across the world. May there be a right fear of the Lord. Pray that we would see people turning in great numbers to the living God and finding meaning and purpose. Help us as a church to continue to hold out a message of hope and life. In a moment of quiet, let's bring before God those people and those matters on the hearts of each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, now and forever. Amen. Just the fourth of battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho And the wall came tumbling down You may talk about your men of Gideon You may talk about the men of Saul But there's none like good old Joshua At the battle of Jericho Joshua fought the battle of Jericho Jericho, Jericho Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. Up to the hill, 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 up to
to the walls of Jericho, they marched with spears in hand. Come below them, ran horse Joshua said, cause the battle is in our hand. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Sheep horns began to blow, the trumpets began to sound. Joshua commanded the men to shout, and the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. One more time, and Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho, Joshua fought the battle 